Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And uh, we have yet, you guessed it, another amazing guest, my friends. It is, wow, the first day of February 2024, my friends. What a way to kick off a brand new month. Now, um, remember, my friends, if you want to get a text message reminder when we first go live right every morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, you can text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. Just get a gentle little nudge. Text the words or letters WUL to 813-296-8553. And if any time throughout this show... You want to get started with our challenge, enroll in our blueprints, buy a ticket to a mastermind, go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. Now, my friends, we have an Oklahoma girl here on the show today. It's a beautiful thing right there from the Midwest. She's full-time online. Prior to this, she was a hairstylist for 16 years. Also, for the last two years, she worked for a national sports organization as a softball coach and director of teams. My friends, um, we are going to hear Jennifer's story today and why she decided to pursue a side hustle or a career, as she may call it, in digital marketing. With that being said, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> softball, huh? Yep. Wow, my son just started T-ball. Yep, I remember those days. Very excited about it. We practice every day. Yeah, it's it's fun. I have three daughters that all play softball, so it's it's nonstop for us, especially in Oklahoma. It's huge, so mm -hmm. nonstop. Okay, so former hairstylist, tell us what led you to – the online world, what led you to Legendary Marketer and why you decided to move forward? Yeah, so my family just moved here. Um, we just moved from Colorado. My husband and I were born and raised. So um, we moved from Colorado to Oklahoma in August. Um, and I kind of was, you know, as doing hair for so long, I was getting burnt out. And then with running, you know, this softball organization, I was, I was basically running it. So I was doing all the training, I was recruiting, I was coaching. Um, and then I was doing it on a national level. So it was a lot of like, I basically was working two jobs nonstop. And so I think, you know, when you grow up as a competitive athlete, you're just taught at a very young age to just grind. You're taught to just work hard, like all emotions set aside, you just, you just work hard. And so that's what I've always done. Um, and you know, we had our, we had our oldest daughter when, when we were 20, I was 21. So we we're pretty young parents. And, you know, I, I just, I had originally gone to school for photojournalism. Um, I was pretty certain I was going to be like the next sportcaster on ESPN. Like that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I think with that like experience, I, I took a, you know, when I went to school, we really only had like MySpace. That was the only social media platform we had. Um, we didn't really have like, there was like web design and things like that. So I decided to, you know, I've, I've been in here forever, been in sports forever, and I was just getting burnt out. So I decided, um, you know, I had been looking and applying for jobs online for, for quite a while when I got here and I had just come across digital marketing. So um, I had found Chelsea and she came across my feed and I was looking at it and I was like, you know, I was always wanting to get into marketing and um, I just found this opportunity. I was like, I think, I think I can do this. I think I'd be really good at this. So I really didn't have a job coming here. So I just went ahead and just went ahead and did it. Hey, sorry. I, I was, I was listening there. I got booted off. Um, so, so um, the only part I missed is that I think your your license didn't transfer over into into Oklahoma from Colorado. Is that right? Yeah. So when I went to school, I just 
they, this was the first year that you could just get a hair license. So I didn't get full cosmetology because I didn't really want to. I didn't want to do nails and skin and all that. I just wanted to do hair. So in Oklahoma, you have to have a full cosmetology license. Um, and I just decided, I was like, I don't really want to go back to school. I don't really want to, you know, I knew I wanted to get into mark. I've always wanted to get into marketing somehow. Like I was going around with my resume, like walking into just places like marketing places around here. And you, you know, I, I walk in and they look at my resume and they'd be like, Oh, 16 years of the hairstylist experience. Like you're not qualified enough. So it was like really hard. I was like, I don't want to go back to school. And so I was like, I know I've got this skill set that I can use that nobody else knows about. Like nobody's going to be able to tell by me walking in the door. And it was ridiculous. Like I was driving around everywhere, applying for jobs. I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so then I yeah, came across this and I was like, I've always wanted to do marketing. Um, I think, you know, the main thing too, when I looked at the business model, like my husband does real estate. So for the last eight years, we've, we've both been entrepreneurs. Um, and we've always run our own schedule. We've always done that. So I knew that working for somebody was not going to be I'm like, how do you go back to working for somebody again after eight years of being basically running your own business? So like looking at the business model, I was like, OK, so, you know, my husband and I always crunching numbers. It's like, OK, so, you know, I, for instance, like I would pay twelve hundred dollars a month for my booth rental just to just to run my business was twelve hundred dollars a month on top of not, you know, not paying for color, products, tools, all of that. So I was paying like fifteen hundred dollars a month just to work. And I was like, how can I get out of that? but also be able to have my own schedule, be able to, you know, do all that. And when I looked at this, I was like, okay, I can invest in it. And the, the one question I asked myself was like, do you think you can make that money back? I'm like, absolutely. So there's your investment covered, right? You know, like in, in real estate, my husband, he pays like $30,000 just to cap, to just to make his commission. So it's like, we're spending so much money every year just to work. And, but, and just to have that freedom. So I was like, I don't think that I can go back to that. I didn't want to go back in that direction. So it was like, I just looked at the business model and I was like, I think this is like, this is awesome. This is a good opportunity and a skill set I can take anywhere with me. So yeah. it's not like it's, it's going to be a skill set that's just going to go away. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And, and um, so many things to tease apart right there. The I you know, the frustration of going to try to prove yourself to people uh, mm -hmm. when you know your potential, but they're just and they're not listening and they don't see it. They're just looking at a piece of paper yeah. and saying, well, you don't qualify on paper. Um, that can be so frustrating. And you're right. The cost to run a self-employed business where you have to show up and you as a stylist, you may have been a 1099 contractor, which means essentially you're running your own business mm -hmm. um, because you're renting that booth. You're paying for it. You're it's essentially a business partnership between you and the salon owner. But it's pretty significant cost for you to just simply break even every month. I mean, yeah. How many days, you know, is it a week? Is it two weeks that you have to work before you break even? And, and by the way, a lot of us think we're running businesses until we realize that if we don't show up and work, we, we don't get paid. And Absolutely. so that's some of the learning that comes along with rich dad, poor dad is understanding the difference between employee, self-employed, and then making that leap over to business owner and investor. And what makes you a business owner? Well, it's that you have the leverage of both systems and people working for you. Systems might be a routine. It might be a product that you sell the same every day. It's a systematized process. It, it might be like McDonald's where the product is consistent all across all stores. It might be in our business software. Videos are part of our system. Mm -hmm. The fact that we can have videos, the fact that we can be sitting here and have over 500 people listening to us live and that thousands more will listen to the replay at no additional work cost to us. Same way that a video goes viral. I mean, the power of 
the systems that are at the average person's fingertips now are way more powerful than they were at one time because anybody can post a video and has the opportunity for it to go viral and get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. That's an example of having a system work for you. Mm -hmm. And nowadays with online marketing, we can leverage systems a lot more than we need to leverage people. With most businesses, you need workers. I remember construction, the number one, and, and I'm sure this is true in the hairstylist business. I'm sure it's true in your husband's real estate business. The number one thing I would always hear is can't find any good help. So the yeah. entire business was dependent upon finding good people to do the work for the business owner. Well, a lot of us don't realize that when we go into starting a business, right? Oh, gee, I got to rely on other people. It's kind of like an MLM. We don't even realize it. Yeah. With this, you actually don't have to rely on anybody. You're just simply leveraging the software and the systems that are out there. And that's the main way that you make that leap from employee to self-employed to business owner. What comes up for you when I, when I, when I go over a few of those things and what were, if not that, what stood out to you as you were initially going through the challenge in terms of, wow, this is powerful and light bulb moments for you. Yeah. So like I, I've definitely, um, <clears throat> I've read rich dad, poor dad before. Um, I think the thing for me, it was like, you know, like it was mind melding for me. I was like, it took me a while to kind of grasp everything. And I'm like, that's crazy because I mean, usually, and I'm, I'm like a, like I'm a go-getter. So I'm like, I was like 15 days. Yeah. I'll do this in seven. Like, watch me. Like I just have that kind of mentality. And so I was like, whoa, I needed to slow down. I definitely needed to slow down. I needed to absorb the information. It took <laughs> oh, that roll down, soldier. Gosh, yeah, that was like my biggest thing looking back. I'm like, why did I rush through that? Like mm -hmm. I had the time. Like I, you know, my kids are at school all day. So it was like I'm kind of in a spot where, yeah, it just it's it's been perfect with my schedule and my kids' schedule. But yeah, I think that I think the hard thing, too, is like I had a hard time picking a niche because, you know, I was like I could go back into the beauty industry because I've, I've done that, you know, forever. I'm like I could I could do sports. But I think you get like when you do things that you like, I've always turned my hobbies into my job just to make my job easier because it's like, oh, well, we have to work. Right. And then, then I got to the point where it was like, but that also takes away from the enjoyment of why that's my hobby. So I'm like, one, I was getting burnt out with it, both of them. And I'm like, you know, sports should be fun. Other things should be fun without having to have the pressure of like have, making it your job. So, mm. yeah, I think I definitely had a hard time picking a niche. And I was just going way too fast, like off from the get go. So I think once I I think it finally clicked for me when I was like I I took um, Joanne did the five day content kickoff challenge in November. Mm. And we were in Florida actually on vacation for Thanksgiving. And I remember staying up like till midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Cause I was like, I was with my family all day. So I was like, you know, I'll, I'll do this at night when everybody's asleep. And it just like clicked. And I was like able to be like, okay, well, what clicked for me before when I was running a successful business and like, what is, what am I, what, like, what am I trying to do now? Like, and it all of a sudden, it just like, boom, it clicked. And I was like, this makes sense now. I was mm. just I kind of was all over the place with ideas of like, oh, I could do this. I could do this. But if then I finally had to realize you just need to simplify and pick one thing and stick with that one thing. Mm. Yeah. And you can always expand down the road, right? If you wanted to get into the health and beauty niche, um, it, it looks like you settled on the online business or online marketing niche. Um, what, uh, and you're kind of, you know, you're building momentum. You're, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of slowly building your social media channels slowly, but surely getting some momentum. You've had some results and, and we've invited you on based on, on those results to kind of talk about it. But, um, it sounds like you really started to just, get started here just a couple of months ago. Is that right? Yep. 
Yeah. I took the challenge back in September. And then, like I said, I kind of sat on like, what niche should I pick? Mm. Um, is it like fitness and health too. Like I could have killed it in that too, but I'm just like, I think I picked the niche that I did because it was something different. It was going to be a challenge. It was something that I didn't feel like I could ever get burnt out on. And as, as I was doing it, I was like, this is actually really fun. Like, it just reminds me of my 18 year old self sitting in my dorm room, like making videos and playing with photography and things like that. But once I actually figured out, like I said, like how, like the content and how to create it, not necessarily like creativity wise, but what to put in it. Okay. Like, so what about the content challenge when we did that helped things click for you? Um, like Joanne says almost every single day, if you are going to be on social media, you have to be social. And I was totally just hiding behind, like I made these pretty little posts and I, it was like affirmations. And I was completely hiding behind it. I'm like, what are you doing? Like you've stood in front of hundreds of people and talked about your sports organization. Like I've, I've been in like, you know, I've done trainings with professional athletes. I'm like, why am I so afraid to be on social media? And it mm -hmm. just brought me back to like, you know, I hadn't been on social media a ton just because like once I, I mean, I, I'd promote my sports, um, but when I was when I went from being a commission hairstylist to a booth rental hairstylist, I wasn't allowed to tell my clients where I was going. So mm. um, I had to find a way to find them all. And if I said anything, they would fire me right on the spot. So I was like, I so I got on Facebook and I started um, I started posting like every time I did somebody's color a before and after. And I'd mm. always been there like call me, text me. I put my schedule on, you know, online and I was able to build a really good client, like a clientele that lasted me till I retired, basically. Like mm. it took me probably six months of just me consistently posting every single day, multiple times a day. And it took like six months and by for sure by a year, it was like, you know, I was making, I was making really good money. So I was like, I know it's going to, this is going to take time, but I knew yeah. that it, Consistency was going to be key. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what we've seen even with this show here, right? This is as the CEO of Legendary Marketer, I have responsibilities to run and operate the company and, you know, teach and create content for our curriculum. But I also am still a marketer and like to practice what I preach and like to be in the trenches doing it so I can stay sharp, no pun intended. And what we've seen in terms of this business page right here, this Facebook business page that we're streaming on right now through the consistency of doing these shows every day have been growing, have, have it's grown this particular page right here from, you know, zero and having very little interaction starting from absolute scratch to over 158,000 followers on this page, all organically, right? Or most all organically. We have run some ads on this page. Um, but the majority has been just doing this show consistently every day. And um, it's, it's amazing what you know, it doesn't feel like you're growing when you're growing. It doesn't feel like it's moving or going fast. And I'm sure at times it can feel like paint's drying for you as well. It's like, geez, you know, when am I going to get that viral video or, but you're, you're right now, you're on the path of the hair, the, the tortoise, not the hair. Right. Mm -hmm. So what is, um, what are, what are some of the things that you've had to overcome up until this point and where are you keeping your focus at right now, currently in your business now that you've been, actively marketing here for a couple of months yeah i think that like for for sure it was like okay um like i keep going back to, to back to the content challenge because it was like okay first of all you need to have a hook right so it's like you know you 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 have hooks that they give like you you know you guys give us hooks that we can use but it was like ultimately it was like you know i heard you talk about it one time in in one of the wake up legendaries and you were like you can have all of these products around you, but if you don't focus on the main one, like what is the point of having all these products? So I, I, I immediately went back to 
when somebody walks in the salon. So you're like, what gets them through the door? And I'm like, I get them through the door. It's not any of these products. They don't come in to buy products. They, they're expecting to see me right when they walk in the door, right? So that, that ultimately was like, okay, I'm the hook. I've been the hook the whole entire time. Mm. I need to stop hiding and I need to start putting myself out there on social media. I think that was the hardest part. And so that's probably the hardest part for everybody. It's like, hey, what am I going to talk about? Because I've never done this before. Like, and then, you know, like the fear of like, you know, looking ridiculous on social media, things like that. So it's like, you know, and then I thought about it and I was like, you just, that, that the biggest fear was just getting myself out there. And now mm -hmm. it's just making sure, you know, like I watch some of the other people, like, you know, some of the other marketers and I'm like, I, I pick up things that they do and I learn from them. Cause it's like, you know, I, I've worked in salons with, 30 other women who are all trying to build their clientele at the same time. Like it's not easy. So, yeah. but it also makes you feel like, you know, it's not oversaturated. Like the market will never be oversaturated because you are you, you are who you are and people are going to find you for you. So I, I always tell myself that I'm like, people are going to find me for me just like they always have. Like I'm the reason why they, you know, they follow me. So it's like, you know, it, it is, has been, a it has been slow growing for me, but also I think I kind of like, like I said, I rushed into it too quick. I didn't absorb the information probably like I should have because mm. that's just my personality. And now I'm starting to be like, okay, slow down, concentrate on the one niche and then mm. make sure, you know, I'm a perfectionist too. So like, I, I can't just blast out videos like easily. Like I sit there and I'm like, you know, I'm very visual and that's just, that's just the the hairstylist in me, I guess. I'm just like, got to make sure it looks good before it goes out. So I, I do take a little bit more time on it, but I don't know. I think that for me, it's, yeah, figuring out that content piece of it, like just getting over that fear. You just got to do it. Just got to do it. Yeah. It's amazing. We all have that same challenge, struggle, whatever you want to call it, no matter how you know, how successful we are, or what our experience is in the past. It's just you. And I think you nailed it, that fear of being judged out there on social media and just making a fool of ourselves, which is not a, it's not a, that's not a new fear. I mean, we've always, I mean, that's kind of what life is about, right? Image management. We're always trying to manage our image. You know, I said that in front of a buddy last night, that word image management, and he was like, damn, I've never heard it put that way. I was like, yeah, I was like, it kind of needs no explanation, right? It's pretty self-explanatory that, you know, we're always trying to manage our image in some way, shape or form. And if we try to over manage it, what ends up happening is, is that we don't do anything. And then we actually look silly for not doing anything, which <laughs> is kind of the irony of it, Yeah. right? If we overmanage it, and we also people can tell, like, wow, that person's really, you know, afraid, or, you know, um, there's lots of different ways that we try to overmanage our 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 image. So there's a fine balance. We can't undermanage it either, because then we're just, you know, a loose cannon with no self awareness, and it's like, oh no, that's scary too. I don't want to undermanage my image. So I have to find a decent balance, sort of like the saying that everything in moderation, I have to find that balance of managing my image that's not too much. It's not too perfectionist. It's not too analysis paralysis. It's not too where I c come off fake. Mm hmm I also can't be like totally unhinged and unaware. So I have to find that healthy balance. And sometimes that can be, um, you know, I can have boundaries with myself, like yeah, I'm going to film this video and I'm not going to edit it for more than 15 minutes or I'm not going to watch it more than twice because I tell you, the more times I watch a video, <laughs> the more times I can find something wrong with it and critique it. I don't need anybody else critiquing my videos. You know, a lot of times we want a, a, a social media audit or a critique from somebody in the community. It's like, friend, you don't need any more critiques. You're critiquing the hell out of yourself. 
you know, I need to find a way to get it out there, but also not get it out there without it being quality, finding that balance between quantity and quality. And so, you know, I love that you're taking it slow. Some people are hell bent and determined to post three times a day. And because they've heard that so many times and it's like, I got to get it out no matter what. And okay. If that's helping and that's working for you and that's helping you practice and you feel like that's a commitment that you need, there's no wrong way to do it. But also there's nothing wrong with taking a little bit more time, posting less, being a little bit more thorough with editing, with, right. You know, putting, making sure that you put out something quality there's no real right or wrong way to do it. It's just the most important thing is to do it and yes. to not sit in that analysis paralysis, which is 99% of all of our problem. None, most, most, m I haven't really met a whole lot of people who are unhinged and unaware and are just like, ah, it, we're all like over analyzing ourselves. We're all afraid of judgment. We're all afraid of rejection. Everybody here, you're all smart. You're not unhinged and unaware. So most of us need to push ourselves to just get it out there. That's why we've said things in this community over time, like just hit post, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to watch it again, you know? And so um, it sounds like, you know, you're right in alignment with a lot of us that, you know, have the perfectionism and the comparisonitis. Um, what have you found that is working for you? What, what, um, what sort of grooves are you getting into now? What, what are some things that have helped you to get it out, to, to get better, to get more comfortable on camera? What sticks out to you that you could share that has been an area of growth that is resulting in actual results for you. Yeah, I think that, you know, like I definitely, I always make myself available. Like I even say in my posts, like DM me, like I, you know, and Facebook has been great for me because that's where most of my people are anyways. Like I didn't really post on Instagram. I didn't have a TikTok, like, you know, so Facebook. And like I said, I rarely posted on Facebook. I mean, I, I broke up with my clientele on Facebook. Like that's how I, I didn't even want to have those conversations with people because I, that's, I, I'm terrible at goodbyes. So it was like when we moved, I was like, I've made a post on Facebook and I was like, here we are. Like people didn't even like my, I, yeah, nobody even knew. I mean, our family knew, but that was it. And so I think for me, it was like, I don't know, just getting over that. Just kind of, I don't know being able to just get back to like, okay, I, I, I always have been available for my clients. It was always like, here's my phone number. Call me if you ever need me, skip the front desk, like just reach out to me. So I think that I, like, like I said, in my posts, I just say DM me. I know that, you know, eventually it might get a little hard, but I still have clients that I'm like, I fly back to Colorado and do their hair like once a month. And I take a handful of clientele. And so I think that I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me about it. Like I've had a lot of phone calls with people like genuinely. It's like, you know, you go from all of a sudden doing hair for so long, you break up with your clientele on Facebook and it's like, oh, now what are you doing? Like now you're doing some sort of marketing. Like what is this? So it's like a lot of questions arose and it's like, you know, I, I think that I just have made myself really available for people. Like you got to just be available for people to be able to talk to. And because no, I mean, I think that there, there's a ton of interest. A lot of people are interested in it. Um, and that's why I'm like, you know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, they know me. I'm, I'm very truthful. So I think it's that has kind of helped grow more and more. People are starting to get more and more interested, I think, because I have made myself so available to them and they trust me and they know me. And so I think, you know, just consistently, you know, putting yourself out there and letting people know that you're available is, is, has been huge for me. Mm. Love that. Love that. Now, a few of you have asked, you know, that content kickoff challenge that Jennifer mentioned, 
uh, a few moments ago that was helpful. This is another thing that we've done here in this community that's been free. And so, you know, um, sometimes we'll, we'll uh, not often, but sometimes we'll get negative reviews or uh, in, in as, as we should. I mean, at, at, there's many months that we have 25,000, 25, 30,000 people taking our, our 15 day challenge. So there's going to be a few people, but this would be an example on top of the show that we do every single day for free. Um, these episodes are 45 minutes to an hour long of behind the scenes, real, no script, no script, no prompted questions. Jennifer, you have no idea what I'm going to ask you next, do you? <laughs> no. Uh, and there was no warm up either. It's just kind of like, let's go, let's go live. Um, so this is a really valuable resource. Occasionally we'll do these challenges, these content challenges, these marketing challenges. Well, if you go into our Facebook group and you, um, and you search content kickoff challenge, uh, and I'll show you exactly how to do that here. Uh, so let me share my screen just because I want to help all of you and deliver value. So you'll go here to your Facebook page. You'll click on our legendary marketer group. You should have that as a shortcut over in your sides. Um, uh, you know, you should organize your Facebook so uh, things are where you can find them. You'll go over here to the search bar inside of the group and you'll type in content kickoff challenge. When you bring that up, uh, day one will come up, okay? Day two, there's five days to it. Day three is right here. Day four, and uh, this is day five, okay? So um, so you guys can go uh, – I'm sorry, this is day five. So you guys can go in there and you can access that right now, uh, and it's just another free piece of value – that we have for all of you and maybe something will click for you as well in that particular content challenge. Now that is going to be removed from the group soon. That, um, that, uh, particular content challenge is going to be moved into our paid curriculum. And so if you want to take advantage of that, um, if you're listening to this later, it may not be there. Um, but we occasionally do these, these challenges, like I said, and um, you just never know where you're going to get your breakthrough from. I think that's the wonderful thing about this community is that there's always something going on. It's not always from me. Okay. V very little of it is, is from me. We have um, these wake up legendaries every day in which we're, we're showcasing you and other people like you, Jennifer, who are sharing their stories. There's the challenge itself. There's uh, the Facebook groups in the community. There's if you enroll in the blueprints, there's daily coaching there. Um, literally two coaching calls per day, plus all of the curriculum, um, plus decade in a day workshop where we teach you how to go and essentially enter into a niche and start and launch a business in. We do a different niche every workshop. The last one, Jennifer, was you know, how to start a business in the chicken coop niche, right? Where somebody might be uh, teaching people how to build their own chicken coops. And, you know, um, it, it's just a unique niche that, you know, tons of people are interested in, especially as more people are looking to do more at home and be more self-sustaining and so forth. And so, if you could touch, we could go back to the niche piece a moment. Uh, you had touched on it before. You know, a lot of people think when they look into this that, well, you know, this is this is an MLM or we're only teaching people how to go into one specific niche or people are required to promote legendary marketer products. And it's just not true. People can sign up as an affiliate completely separately for free. Uh, we're simply providing on the main part of our business, which is the core of our business, education about co four business models, the core four way to sell information online. That's courses, coaching events, and doing affiliate marketing. And, uh, you know, these skills are what I call transferable skills. You mentioned that earlier in the show as well. Um, can you talk about your niche selection and how elaborate a little bit more on 
how these skills are transferable, how in your own words. And I think maybe you do too, that people should learn these skills no matter if they learn them here or not uh, in 2024 moving forward because the internet's going away. Just talk a little bit about niche selection and how these skills apply to you know, many different niches, including the ones that you already have expertise in. And you talked about that earlier, the hairstyling, um, et cetera. Uh, say more about that, would you? Yeah, I think that, you know, like my main reasoning why I picked it, like I said, it was because I was I wanted something different. I wanted a challenge. And I've always like I, I come from a family of educators. Like, I mean, that's I've I come from a you know, a heavy background in education too. So it was like, this is, this was fun for me. This was something completely different that I'd never done before. And I was like, you know what? I think I, I just, I just wanted to try it. And I think that was what kept me from like, you know, the get go being able to figure out, like I, I sat on it for a couple months thinking about like, what do I want to do? If I'm going to start something, you know, I need to, i I needed it to be something that I could fully have, you know, understanding about and control over. And I think that, you know, I think that with the make money online niche, it's like, it's, it's different. It's different than, you know, like, you know, you can go Google a million recipes or a million exercises. And it's like, I don't really want to videotape myself doing exercise. Like that's something I like going up to my basement and doing, you know, going to my basement and doing by myself. Like, I don't want, or, you know, like, like I said, I think you get, like, I was just burnt out with doing hair. It was like, how much more can I talk about these things? I wanted something different that is more relatable to people because I don't know, I don't know a single person that does not need extra money right now. I think it's something that nobody ever wants to admit. I think that that's people just don't want to, don't want to admit that, but everything right now is expensive. Like everything. I don't know a single person, a single family. It's not like a single conversation that I have with, you know, like even parents, it's like, like everybody needs extra money right now. And if you can find a way to do that online and be able to truly work a few hours a day, like, and have as much time as you want with your kids, like I've never had that. I remember, you know, I would work 12 hour days and I'd, I'd kiss my kids goodbye in the morning while they were sleeping and I'd come home while they were in bed. Like it was, it's, it's not fun. So I think that I I picked this niche just because it was it was different. It would be challenging. I was interested in learning more. Like my husband being in the real estate business, our our retirement plan has always been investing. Like that's what we've always we've just always done that. And so it's like this can, you know, not only help me, but his business too. Like moving to a new area, he had to get relicensed too. And it's like I can I can now market your business. Like I I can do all of that for you. I can, I can run Facebook ads. I mean, I, I was like, there's so much that I learned through all of this that I'm like, I could help you with your business, you know, and I just wanted to get it. You, I think it's a really good starting point and a really good learning point. And then, like I said, you can you basically go anywhere from there. I think, I think the one thing I have a hard time connecting to other people with is the fact that when you say you're running your own business, if you never run your own business before, you don't know what that's like. You know, it's like you don't have to be you don't have to have amazing tech skills or, you know, things like that. But you really do have to have that mindset of like, you know, and 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 the you have to be able to like you have to be able to do it. You can't just be like ex expect it, you know, expect money to just be flowing in. It's like it's a lot of hard work and it takes time. And I think a lot of people, you know, like I'm an instant gratification, like I'm physically, you know, with sports and hair it's like it's it's always been my life and so it's like when you you know when you don't have when you don't have that you know it's always instant gratification with everything and that's just what people expect and it's like you know it's not going to just be overnight like it's going to take time even if it takes a year great i can guarantee i would make more money doing this than working you know uh making 35 to fifty thousand dollars a year working nine to five and missing out i'd have to hire a babysitter i'd miss out on my kids activities in the evening i would not enjoy what i was doing like i don't just the you know we got to think about the feet especially as we get older it's like how much longer do i want to really stand on my feet for it's that's not you know 
And how much longer do I want to like I or like having to go back and work for somebody else? That's not that's not the end all be all goal in life is not to just work for somebody else. You know, you have to have some sort of like just to be able to have, you know, just be comfortable financially. Like I, I didn't go into this and anticipating like I'm going to be a millionaire overnight. You know, I, I went into it anticipating like I'm, you know, this can take some time. And I, the quality of life for me was way, it was 100%. And like I said, the business model too, when you, when you actually break down the math of it, it's like, do you, can you make your investment back? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you, now you have a skill set that you can teach other people, you know, that, and you can, you know, help other businesses and things like that. So for me, it was kind of like a no brainer. It's like, let's do this. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking so much sense right now and you're saying exactly what everybody needs to hear. Um, like this is, the, I, I really, I really just wish that everybody just of the entire conversation that we've had just heard what she just said loud and clear because you all want a business. You all want the outcome and the results of what a, a thriving, successful business can give you. That's what you want. You actually don't want the business, right? The business is the business is just the vehicle to get to where you want to go, right? You want the vacation. You don't want the ride there, right? And you want the highlights of the vacation. Um, you want all the good times, not the waiting in lines, not the rainy days, not the cancellations, not the except you ever go on a, like a trip and it's like, damn, man, it was so much more fun getting excited about this trip than actually being on the trip, right? So most people want the vacation, don't want the ride there, don't want to sit on the plane for six hours, don't want to do all the, you know, work that it takes to save the money. And then the, 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 the coming down once I call it the re-entry when you get back from the vacation, <laughs> most of us can't see past the vacation. <laughs> so what Jennifer just talked about was the mindset that you need to have a business. And the truth is, is that most of you don't have it. That's okay. This is an opportunity to develop it. But all the things that we talk about every single day on this show is really what you all need to be focused on. It's more about the dynamics less about the mechanics. The mechanics are the tech, setting up the funnels. That's all distractions. That's stuff that really, you know, it's not that it's not hard. Don't want to minimize anybody's experience. But what's really tough is are you willing to stick with something for a year even if you don't get results, even if you do have a slower learning curve? Are you willing to take a thousand no's? Are you willing to, you know, get up early, stay up late, rearrange your schedule, sacrifice time, cut things, people, places, things off that are no longer serving you, stop worrying about what other people think, tune them out, block them, set boundaries, like all the stuff that it really requires to be a successful entrepreneur. And it's not overnight. It's not over month. It can sometimes not be over year. It can be a multi-year process. And most of you are not willing to take that journey. And that's okay. That's okay. The, the, the average person who buys any how-to information does nothing with it. Forget getting any results, does nothing with it. That's okay. That's human nature. I'm not in the gym business, but I know enough people to have that, what do they call it? That an anecdotal evidence that the majority of people who buy a damn gym membership don't do anything with it either. The majority of people that go on a diet don't do anything with it. The majority of the people that start up a, a nutrition plan fall off. That, that's, that's human nature. That's why success to me, I've realized, is actually not hard. 
It's actually easy. And the reason why is because I've realized that hardly anybody's willing to do what it actually takes. And I am. And so the you talked about you talked about saturation, friends. What an what a perfect excuse that I've seen people make. Well, it's oversaturated, and I've heard it in multiple businesses. It's not just online marketing. It's tons of. It's a common excuse. It's oversaturated. It's 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 so not oversaturated, because ninety nine point nine percent of people quit, stop, give up. Sometimes right before the miracle happened and sometimes right after they got started. So when you actually stick with something long enough, you start to see that after a year or so, hardly nobody that you started with is still doing it. And this can be true if you went go, go to a gym, friends, and stay at that gym for a year and meet people and watch the turnover rate of the faces that are there one year later. It'll be a totally different group of people. The same thing, ironically, in recovery rooms. A lot of people try to get sober. I've been in recovery rooms for 15 years. I've seen a lot of people try. I've seen a lot of people fail. I mean, I'm talking about the turnover rate in, in some of these recovery rooms are higher than a telemarketing company. <laughs> It's even higher in entrepreneurship. So, you know, friends, we either, you know, it's it's all about the perspective. And what you said there, Jennifer, is just so spot on. I was like wanting to throw my hat a thousand times because it's like it's all about the mindset. I know that you may be tired of hearing about mindset, but what one of my mentors told me one time was a sponsor in recovery. If something pisses you off, it's exactly what you need to hear. It's not pissing you off for no reason. It's pissing you off because it's hitting a sensitive spot. And so each one of us today has a wonderful opportunity here on the 1st of February, 2024. We're still in, in such the new part of this year. This year can still be the absolute best year of all of our lives, right? Like it's still so early. For you to take a look and say, what is my vulnerability? What is my liability? My own personal liability within my own personal mindset. What do I need to, to fix, to get better at, to focus on? Maybe I just give up. Maybe I start things and don't finish them. Maybe I develop an attitude once I get into it to where I start getting negative And I start finding all the reasons why... I probably shouldn't follow through or be doing it anyways. Well, look at this person. Look at that person. That's why we talk about comparisonitis, you know, image management. Maybe I always start something and then worry too much about what other people think, right? Maybe that would be time to really set some boundaries. You know, whatever it is for you, if you don't address it head on and, 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 and get through it, you're not going to get over it. Mm -hmm. You got to go through it. You got to face it head on. And that's what entrepreneurship is about for me. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't avoid. It's kind of like a relationship, you know? You can't run. You can't hide. You got to go through it. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, though, will eat you up and spit you out. It will, I mean, it, it's got, it's not your compassionate spouse. It's not your patient wife. Mm -mm. It, it's just, it's, the, it, you'll just be ignored. The world will just move on without you. Do, doesn't care if you feel sorry for yourself. Doesn't care if you feel like a victim. You, you, you have to decide to keep up. You have to decide to say, hey, I have a seat here. I deserve to sit here. And that's why I always tell people, go on to the internet as if you belong there. As if you as if you own the place, walk in, act as if you're already successful because nobody's going to come along, not me, not anybody else and ever give you permission and say, now you can be confident and now you can go start helping people. Nobody's ever going to do that. You have to make that decision yourself.
And now is a great day to do that. And Jennifer, you got me ranting here because of that just cold, hard, beautiful truth, which is what most of us have not had somebody in our life telling us. We've been coddled. We've been manipulated to, so people, so we could be on other people's agendas. People want us on their agenda for lots of, for a multitude of reasons. But until we, and you're right, Jennifer, we are getting older. All of us are getting older. Until we decide to live our lives for us and deal with all of the shit that is uncomfortable, that is holding us back, we will stay stuck. And that, I think, is what recovery for me, but also entrepreneurship has given me the opportunity to do is face myself yep. and go head on right into the fire, right into the difficult situations and just face them and deal with them. So what have you learned as we bring this in for a landing? What have you learned? It's been a short period of time in your long career of, you know, being a, a leader, you know, softball, um, also a hairstylist sort of working for yourself. But what have you learned about Jennifer in the last three months? You know, I, I definitely I've had a lot of trauma in my life and, um, you know, I won't go into great detail, but I, you know, I think this has helped me a ton. Like I, I know it has because like I, I was getting to the point where, you know, like real estate the last couple of years, it was like somebody just took a big switch and just turned it off. So like you were saying, my husband, you know, we're used to him having three or four closings a month. Like I was getting ready to be done with hair anyways. And it was like all of a sudden two years ago overnight, it was just shut off. So we've had to step back and I, I was working two jobs and we completely had to step back and like redo our budget. I mean, like completely. I mean, when you're having three or four closings a month to go into having like three or four a year, it's huge. And so I think for me, it was like, I just went into like this, I was basically workaholic. It was like, and I, but I didn't have a choice. I've got three kids. I had, I had no choice. So it was like, I was, I, I knew it was getting really, really bad when I, like I had fallen asleep with my Apple watch on one night and I woke up and we had just like, we just had sold our house in transition. We were living with my mom for a few months until we found a house here. And my watch is beeping at me. And my resting heart rate in a dead sleep was 110 beats per minute. I was like, I woke up and I was like, wow, you've got to change your life. You have to change or you're literally going to, I mean, have a heart attack. Like I'm, I'm 37 years old and that's how stressed out I was all of the time with everything that was going on. And I was like, I finally told my husband, I was like, I need to step back. I've never gotten to be home with my kids. I completely need to step back. Like the whole reason we moved here was to like simplify our lives and and get away from like some like just negativity and just it, we just needed to completely restart our lives. And I felt like this has given me the opportunity to like completely slow down, you know, restart, like simplify my life, spend way more time with my kids. Like I don't miss out on a thing anymore. And that to me is worth more than any amount of money I could ever make like that to me is worth everything to me just having that valuable time with my family like my husband's working two jobs right now just so that i can get started in this and i'm mm -hmm. like i know for certain like he's doing real estate but then you know he's selling cars right now just so mm -hmm. that i can do this because he's like he believes in me he's like i know you can do it i know you're gonna do it i know you're gonna be great at it it's mm -hmm. just a matter of me like i just had some i just had things that i had to get figured out in my life where i was like okay does, do I want to continue living my life like this for the rest of my life? Like this was not like a, this was not like an overnight, like side hustle for me. This was like, I'm, I'm leaving my career. I'm quitting my career of 16 years to do something I've never done before, but I'm going to do it and I'm not going to give up on it and I'm going to continue doing it. And it's, this was a life, this was a lifelong choice for me. This was not just an overnight thing. This is like, you know, if it takes, I don't care how long it takes. I, I have to, you know, I need to heal me. I need time for me. I need time for my kids. And that to me, like I said, is more important than any amount of money ever. Whoo woman, <laughs> you're on fire. What's your husband's name? Zach. Shout out to Zach. <laughs> Zach doing his thing, doing his thing. 
That's a real man right there, fellas, out there hustling hard, lifting his lady up. Shout out to Zach. Jennifer, you're a rock star. Keep up the great work. Come back in a couple of months and keep me posted on your journey, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Stay legendary, my friend. All right, my friends, you can go and find Jennifer on TikTok and Instagram, support her, follow her, learn from her, lift her up. Jennifer K. Glick. Jennifer K. Glick. Uh, let me just bring her back on here real quick. Is that how you pronounce your handle? Yep. Okay. Just me. It's just my name. <laughs> All, right. All right. See ya. Bye. All right, my friends, Jennifer K. Glick. That's G-L-I-C-K. Jennifer, I'm going to spell the whole thing. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-K. Glick. G-L-I-C-K. All right, my friends. Wow. Thank you so much for the wonderful comments and the awesome support as always. My friends, you guys are fantastic. You guys are the best and uh, we really appreciate you. Head on over there. Give her a follow. Uh, show her some love. Um, learn from her. Uh, let her learn from you. She's in that in that mode right now to where she's uh, you know she's going to be in a a she's going to have a great year this year. Uh, I can already tell her mindset is determined. It's focused. It's in the right place, focusing on the right things. And my friends, um, you know, uh, this is what's possible when you. Uh, when you, when you, when you focus, when you're determined and, um, when you make a decision that you're going to succeed no matter what, um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's really a magical thing when, uh, you find something that you're on fire about and you can put all of your, your focus and your attention on it and step into the best version of yourself, which is what we see so many people doing who come on the show who are in this community, who are going through this education and using it to build businesses and change their lives. Um, we hope that we inspire you to do the same thing, whether it's here, whether it's somebody somewhere else. We think that you should learn these skill sets um, because they're necessary and needed in 2024 and beyond. We're not going backwards. And as Jennifer said, these skill sets and strategies apply to not only these core four business models that we teach, which are the core four ways to sell information online, but they also actually apply to pretty much every other dang business out there. And probably the job that you're working at right now that you're using to support yourself that you may could be more successful at, make more money, upgrade your value. It's about upgrading your skill sets in order to make more money. And then being smart in terms of how you look at your place in the employee, self-employed, business owner, and investor, um, you know, chart there. You know, you want to take that journey to eventually moving to working for yourself and then getting systems and people that are working for you. And then taking the money that you make from your cash cow business and investing it to actually create passive income that grows for you. And the way that I do that's real simple. It's not a secret. I take the money that I make from my business and I invest it into, you know, real estate. I invest it into, you know, stocks and, and index funds and things that are less risky because I take large enough risk here with my business. It's really a simple solution. It's just difficult to execute simply because of the reasons that Jennifer gave, which is most of us don't have the mindset to follow through from chapter one to chapter two. Chapter one, that first chapter of actually just following through and staying focused and not giving up, that's, that, that's, 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 that's the hardest chapter. And that tends to also stay with you. It's always there. It's always something we have to work on. Even me, 13, 14 years into this, I still have to catch myself. Mm, am I caring too much what they think? I need to just hit post on this. Am I over critiquing myself? Am I over analyzing this? Am I over editing this? Just hit post, Dave. Yeah, I'm vulnerable to it as well. But if you're just getting started, you need to build a little bit of a callus on those sensitive areas of yourself so you can keep going even when your feelings get a little bit hurt. Even when you get a little bit tired, even when you get a little exhausted, even when you get a little stressed out, 
because the stress of growing is a lot different than the stress of that she described where she checked her Apple watch and her heart was 110 beats per minute or whatever it was because she was just worried and felt helpless and powerless. The stress of growth, you know you're doing something. It's hard. It's hard. But you know you're growing through to the next best version of yourself. That's a lot different than the stress of just sitting, waiting for life to happen to you. So take some action today in the right direction. Start your growth. Do something that makes you uncomfortable. Step into the fear. Move towards the uncomfortability, not away from it. And step into the next best version of yourselves. My friend, get out of here. Let's have a great February. It's the first day of the second month of the year. and We're still early. It's plenty of time to make this the best year of your life. Stay legendary, my friends. Get out of here. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Peace.